All right, the last little session we had, we talked about that there are two creations. Uh, we looked at um, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation, but it says old things are passing away. That's the actual literal Greek. doesn't say they've done. They, I mean, the, the King James says they have passed away. The actual Greek says they are passing away. All right, so there's a, we are in a process, as it were, of transitioning from one kingdom to the next. We are in the process of transitioning from um, one creation to a nec the next. And you get this in the book of Revelation where we read in chapter 21, there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth, and it's not going to look like this. Okay? All right. But here's the key. We're trying to find that out now. Okay? That's, that's the big deal. We're not just, this is not just something we're passively waiting to come about someday. We are desiring to, see, as it were, see the hole in the thing here and break and get out of this thing and get over into his reality. Okay? So, um, let's see. Let me make sure. All right, so, so the problem is that we are within this thing. We are looking for answers in this old creation, in the fall. In, in the, it would be like, anybody ever played pinball before? Raise your hand. Good. All right. Well, in pinball, if you haven't played, you, you, you slap a little ball with a little slappers, little arms, and it slaps it up there. And in truth, unless you're really skilled at it, you pretty much don't know where it's going to go. Okay. And you don't know what it's going to hit. Okay. So our reactions or the things that we go through, imagine if we slap something, a slap that ball, whatever that pinball represents, and it's going to run into somebody else, and it's going to cross one of these lines somewhere, and it's going to cause its own reaction. It's going to cause another reaction. Anybody know what an atomic reaction is? That's you when you, when you get freaked out. <laughs> And, and that's what it does. It starts doing all this stuff. So, so let, you know, we jump on that. And let's say that it's happened right here. And so, I mean, this is a pretty good one because it's got several crossovers. <laughs> right there, it is one reaction has caused another reaction that has caused another reaction. <clears throat> and so what we do is we focus down right here, we focus right here, and we say, oh, God. <laughs> Help me with these five people and the junk that's come, come as a result of this. Okay. Now, the, that is all has been a result of chaos in the first place of the fall, of things that are out of order. And you can be a Christian and fit right into this. Unless there is a movement and, and that, you know, that, that begins with not realizing that I can change all of these situations because we're looking in the wrong place for change. What we need to do is not change everything in the old creation, or that's based on the fall, and just about everything around us is based on the fall. You say, well, not that nice building over there. Someone was greedy. They probably <laughs> ran out poor people years ago. Anyway. So, but it is to enter into the view of another creation and what that means to God's heart yeah. instead of trying to straighten this one. And this, this can bring, you know, I mean, you can get depressed. Yes. You know, and, you know, and this little thing that we're looking at right here, this little circle of mess that we're praying over right this minute, it's, it's, the ball's going to keep bouncing around and hitting other stuff. There's, this isn't the end of it. How, how old are you? <laughs> 
<laughs> because you've got a lot more of this stuff coming, you know, unless there is that movement that I was talking about. All right. So Jesus comes along, and there's a new approach. Can anybody clap? <laughs> Thank God. There's a new approach. And we can be with him. But see, notice I said, be with him in his approach because his pr approach, there is this underlying thing here that is eternal that never got touched by all of these lines and never got messed with. And that's related not to his power, not to his goodness, not to his attributes. It is related to the very core of who he is. Okay. And we're so busy looking at attributes and stuff and, you know, I want to go to a Bible school so I can study attributes. Well, that's fine. We we teach stuff like that here, but the 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 real the real desire is to know him. And Paul said that, to know him. In the power of his resurrection, being made conformable to his death. I want to know him in the fellowship of his sufferings. How many Christians even read that scripture? Read right over it. It's, it's there. It's screaming to us. There is something of God that we have missed. And so we still struggle with all of this stuff. And it's a very part, it's, it's a huge part of our life because in truth it is our life. We say, Jesus is my life. No, this is your life. And you're looking to a Jesus outside of this to come fix this instead of looking to Jesus as the life and conforming to a him instead of a denomination or a doctrine or, a, or emphasis or a whatever. And again, there's nothing wrong with all of that. There isn't. But it's not, it's not number one in the heart of God. It is not number one in the heart of God. And you see... We can miss it. We could easily miss it because he's not going to go, hey, hey. And that's, that's what I want to show some things here. <clears throat> I'm going to read out of, uh, if you want to turn there with me, it's Mark 12, verse 28 through 34. <clears throat> Mark 12, 28 through 34. <clears throat> And one of the scribes came, having heard them reasoning together and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked, which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, the first commandment of all. You know, this is a real unusual thing for Jesus to give you a straight answer. Have you, anybody, has anybody ever really studied close enough to see that that's actually true? He literally is coming up with a straight answer. The first of all the commandments is... Hear, O Israel, the Lord, thy, uh, the Lord our God is one Lord. So, so he's saying, here's the very beginning of the answer. The answer is, hear what I'm about to say, O Israel. It's not just the first commandment is love God. The first commandment starts with, you got to hear what I'm saying. Okay, why would Jesus say that? I'm Jesus. Of course you listen to me. Well, you know, you know how that goes. Verse 30, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first command. Okay, so, so basically the very first thing that God asks, the very first thing that, that is important, and what is the first, the first, the most important, important thing in all of Christianity, in all of the world, in all of the ministry. What is to love the Lord your God with all your heart and your soul and your strength. You start there. If you're going to fulfill the things that we're talking about, we're not talking about love the ministry or love. There's nothing wrong with loving the ministry, loving the saints, but even the loving the saints is second. And the second is like it, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. There is none, Jesus, there, I'm telling you, there's nothing else more important 
You know, do you, have you ever walked up to somebody and say, hey, do you have the ministry of love in Jesus? <laughs> you know, no, no, mine's real important. <laughs> And, and this is Jesus saying this. There is none other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said unto him, Well, master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God, and there is none other but he. None. Uh, if you're going to fall in love, there's none other but he. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding. How do I do that? How do I love him with all? He's not talking about loving with all of the knowledge that is God. We can't know God like that, but we can know his heart with all the soul and with all the strength and to love his neighbor as himself is more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. If you do that, this guy says, this is greater than... It. Now, you got to remember, in Israel, sacrificing was, was it. This is how you worshipped. This is how you loved God. This is how you followed through. Death of a lamb. Sacrifice, selfless giving was at the heart of anything else that they ever did. And God made it so. And this guy says, and it's greater than all the sacrifices that have ever, ever been offered. All right. Well, anybody ever offered some sacrifices before? <laughs> you know? How about, we bring the sacrifice of praise. Anybody remember that one? Well, that's great. Praise God. Well, let's bring it. But I've got, I got news for you. There's something greater than praise and worship. And, and, and I lead praise and worship. So you, you, you do understand. None of this is a put down. Some people take it that way because if we lift Jesus up, well, you're putting down, you know, don't lift Jesus up. Because that makes, that makes what I'm doing lesser. <laughs> well, no, I, I mean, the goal isn't to make anything look lesser. The goal is, can, you know, let's just get our priorities straight. And it starts with the heart, not with how you do a certain ministry or whatever. And, Jesus, and when Jesus saw that he had answered discreetly, he said unto him, Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. Okay, so for him, the kingdom of God relates back to this thread that runs through here. The kingdom of God is something, it's where God rules, but it's not the rule just in the earth, it's in the rule in us as the earth. Thy kingdom come in earth, not just on earth. As it is, always and forever. In God, in the heavenly. And no man after that durst ask him any other questions. Okay, so Jesus says, this is it. This is, this is the number one thing. This is all that's important. And then he goes, well, I guess there's nothing else to ask. <laughs> right? I mean, you just kind of go, well, if you're saying this is really it, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and argue with you or come up with something. Else. What about, and then look stupid. You know, what I mean? you know what I'm talking about. I've done it many a time. You know? I just want to be with you. If you say this is what's important to you, then I want to be with you. All right. So this time, this time, in contrast to the very beginning and then the fall and all of this happening, this time Jesus comes and the cross is totally unselfish. Jesus comes to lay down his life. He comes to do that for our benefit and to not ask for love himself. He pointed to the commandment, but he's going to, he's going, this is what I'm going to, I'm going to demonstrate love. And if you never see it, that's fine. You can call it a miracle. You can call it the grace of God instead of God giving grace. And you, uh, you can make it all these religious things, but I'm doing this for you and I am not going to, 
ask for anything out of this whole thing. This is not a commandment anymore. Not that kind of commandment. It's not a commandment. And you're not required to return my love. I'm just going to give myself to you. Ah, so when I, as I was thinking about that, I thought, well, how do we, then how do we perceive the cross? How do, that's left up to free will, remember? Free will was actually given to us. We can, we can remain self-focused. We can remain the object. And we can say it's all about my salvation. What, what was so special about me that God died for me? Well, you know, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. If you want to dig around in that mess and hope you find a jewel in there, you won't. But you are totally, you know, meant not just to be forgiven, but crucified with Christ, which the scriptures say over and over and talk about in many different ways, so that the treasure and earthen vessels could be put in there, which is Christ. The treasure, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Okay, so I'm an earthen vessel. I'm a dirt bag. Earthen vessel. Get it. I'm a dirt bag, but Jesus is the treasure. I don't have a problem with that. I'm doing just fine. You say, well, you were born in an orphanage. Doesn't that hurt your widow feelings? You know? No, it certainly doesn't. I'm glad that, that he's what's treasured. He certainly is in me. I don't have to be built up. I have, to, I have to be broken enough that Christ can shine out of this earthen vessel. So I'm not trying to become great. He must increase and I must decrease. That's what the scriptures say. All right, so how do we perceive the cross? We can perceive it as just for salvation for us. It's all about us. Or we can perceive it as... He wants to get a bride for him. He has something that was on his heart. He cared about something. He said, there is nothing like this on the earth because there is no earth yet. So I'm going to create the earth and I'm going to do all this. And when it's all done and the end of the book of Revelation comes, it's not going to be a thousand million ministries. It's not going to be this. It's going to be a bride coming down having the glory of God. See, that's another way of perceiving all this. So, and then, so how do we perceive creation? Um, let me read Genesis uh, chapter 1, verse 28 through 30. Let me read it for you because we're going to almost, um, I'm down to two minutes. <laughs> so let me read it. Now listen carefully. See if you can find the heart of God bleeding through these verses instead of just a, a, a creation story. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God, and God said, Behold, I have given you everything. Every herb yielding seed is upon the And every, I have given you every tree which is for, uh, da 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 da, and, you shall, and it shall be to you for me and to, I'm sorry. And every beast I have given, and every fowl, and everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life. And then finally, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. So, in creation, he says, I give you everything. We may have to go a few minutes off. I give you everything. 
Uh, I give you all, everything, every beautiful thing that I've built. It's for your pleasure. I've given you that. I give you this incredible garden. I give you the, the fullness of what's in this garden. I, I, I just I eat, just eat freely. And I give you dominion over all of this stuff. Now you, you give just love back. Just love me. That'd be the greatest thing. That'd be the greatest thing that you could do. Just love me back. Don't study me and tear me apart and try to understand me through all your religious methods. Just get close to me and be quiet and I will speak my heart eventually. But I all I really ask after giving you everything is this, because to me, this is first. Wow. So I was thinking about Galatians 2.20. We'll quit with this scripture. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Paul perceived something beyond selfishness, beyond gain, beyond glorious, you know, gathering of the things that are ours because God loves us and we're so special to him. He saw that Jesus, so I should take this. He saw that Jesus had died for him. That Jesus had died for him so that he would have life. And he lived in the benefits and the blessing of that life for years. And he he drank it in, and he loved God, and he loved what he was given and everything, and, 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 you know, spread the word of it and all of that. But at a certain juncture, he looked at that cross, and he looked at the death of the Son so that he would get life. And he said, I must be crucified with Christ so that he might live. He died so I might live. Now, a new cross spoken of only in the New Testament, spoken of only in the epistles, not the gospels, not the blessings, not the healing, not the this and that, though all of that continues. But, it, but he saw something different. In Galatians 2.20 is just one example of that. He saw an opportunity, an opportunity that he could give back that kind of love that is so selfish and doesn't ask for anything in return. And he says, now I will be crucified, or I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but not I live, live, but Christ lives. Okay? So he died that I might live, and I turned around and give myself in this manner, that he might live. All right, well, that's insane. You don't hear that preached. You don't hear it taught. But it is all through Paul's writings. And it is the solid basis of maturity that brings us to the book of Revelation, where whatever happens there doesn't change anything. And in fact, it molds a bride that will become everything he loves because she lives selflessly now, for him and not for her glory and ministry. Amen. Let's, let's pray and we'll close this out. Father, thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you, Lord, that you, you did die for us and you do give so much. You give so much. You give so much and we don't even know but you've shown us a way through Christ's death, 
Not, not just our death, I'm crucified with Christ. The purpose for that is not because I'm bad or sinned or not worthy to live. But the purpose for that is so that Christ may live in me. And that I, because I have matured in my love for you, I can no longer ignore that. If that is your way, then may you be glorified in ways and find satisfaction in ways that we, we can't comprehend because probably because we still have a whole lot of ourself in the focus. But you still love us. You still haven't changed. And you still are right there whether we're in the, the chaos. You still show up. Though your answers are not there, your answers are in your son. You still do that, and you will do that, and you will give, and you will go the extra mile. And if nobody else lives it, you will do that. But we know that there is a satisfaction that can be brought. We know that there's something that we can give back to you. And in fact, that was why you brought everything into creation in the first place. Lord, we thank you. We trust the Holy Spirit. You sent him to guide us into all truth, into the fullness of Christ. And so we're with you, Lord. We're with you, Father. We're with you, Holy Spirit. Keep walking us through, even if by, as children by hand, walk us through straight to the heart of Jesus, Holy Spirit. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Yikes. Looks to me like